Hi Dad, I know we're making the four jointed frame project. Uh, so what's this joint here? That's the bridal joint, Jake, and um, there's my design. I know some of the viewers have been asking about joints and sizes and how we do things. So I thought we'd just focus on this joint, this project again. We've done a first clip on the on the drawing, which is that one. That's the bridal joint, Jake. That is a very, very tight, very strong construction joint. And I'm knocking it in. I'll even use a mallet. It's a very strong construction joint, used in all sorts of situations. There's the dovetail going in. Very strong joint again. Okay, and I've started here um, making another one so we can show the viewers. There's the latch dovetail. Okay. We'll do a tea halving. Yes, Jake. What's the point in having half a dovetail? Well, if I had, if it went right through, of course, the wood would perhaps um, fall apart. But um, it allows you to have a really secure joint, and it can only be pulled out from one one way, one angle, that way. It can't be pulled out that way. You'd have to break the wood. But um, yeah, lapped. So that's a lapped joint there, halfway through. And the mortise and tenon. You may ask, did you did you want to know about that? Yeah. There's the mortise and tenon. That's not a brilliant joint I've done there, but it. It shows the principle. That's the uh, mortise. So that's the tenon, the tenon, and the mortise is the hole, as in a mortise lock and a door, a hole. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. Um, we're going to do the bridle joint and the tea halving joint today, which is this one here. So if I, if you just pan back and I will pull that there. Oh, that's so tight. I can't. I can't get that out. So if you go around <laughs> that side. I have to knock it out. That's the bridle joint. And we'll show you a little bit about that later. Well, now, in fact. So, um, I suppose the first thing to do is to mark out our cuts. Okay? So, would you mark out like a half a H almost? Yeah, I mean, the idea is everything's really, really accurate and square. So, half an H, yes, you would. It's a third for each part. So, um, those that size there, that width there, is transferred on each piece. And when you're making your frame, guys, the distance there is the same on each piece. And use exactly the same section of wood. That means the overall section is the same on each piece. This is slightly rectangular, but they're all the same. They're all the same size. Um, in terms of the length, the same, and the widths, that and that are the same. So I would suggest you mark your width there really precisely mark your all your joints so um you know which one's going where a and a um d and d that will be the dovetail um c and c so you know where they go back and i've put a face edge marking so you know the face edge in my case is on the inside face and i'm working from the inside out on each one okay if you, it saves me accidentally putting the joint in backwards, okay? Other people do different ways, they can do little lines like that. So those, those line up each time you, you join it, so one there. Okay, it's like a code, I suppose. So I made that mark there. I'm gonna use a tri-square and make a line here. I'll try and do this quickly. And we might even put it on double speed so it speeds up um, the image. And you don't get too um, bored with me going on and on. I'm going to okay. I'm going to make that bit neater there. So we're going to trim that line there so it's square. Can you see that, Jake? Yeah. And I'll have to do the same on the edges. All the sides must be square. Can you see that the tri square has to run flat on that edge there? Some people yeah. sort of hold it like this, and they wonder why the uh, the the line's been lost. And then you transfer that line again. It's very precise. I might just do that, guys, on my tenon saw. If I've got a band saw, I could use it. Yes, Jay. Um, Quick tip. You've got to make sure these, the the line you're referencing, so if you're using that, you've got to make sure that edge is actually straight. Oh, yeah, that must be straight. That That's why that's the face edge. There's a little mark. They're my, my best edge, really. Often played before. But I'll make sure I maintain that size there. And I can see if you come around this size, Jake, you've still got that line there. And that line, of course, again, must be square. So I'll put that there, make sure that's dead square. I'll trim that now, 
um, the joint, easy peasy, you can use a marking gauge, two pins here, and you can adjust the depth, and you can adjust the size of the, uh, the, the markings. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this up so I get basically a, a third here, a third in the middle and a third on the edge. Okay, so there, there I'm going to mark it and then I'll put a point in. Look there, can you see it's about right? And I'm going to turn this around, it's slightly out, so I'm going to move it slightly up. A bit fiddly this job. And turn it around. Nearly there, okay. Do the same again. Okay. Right, what I'll do, I'll come back to you when I've marked it up. But what we'll have, I think that's it. We'll have a line here. A line there. And then we'll have a line across there. Now, I wonder how I did that, to put my finger on there, there, find my position, then move the pencil into the position I want it marked on my marking gauge, make that line, and then I can reposition it, that's the dot there, which is correct, correct, move on, in the marking gauge, you can actually run the marking gauge down the line, I'm just going to adjust that so it is really precise. This is quite tricky, these marking gauges. Once you've marked it, you'll realise why. You can use it again and again. And then you've marked, I've got it right, look. Hold it flat on the edge, E, and run it down. Now these marking gauges are about 10 to 15 pounds. Some of the more expensive ones are 30, 40 pounds. You can buy these online. And there's my line, and I can do the same again wherever. Look, same. And I can, because it's symmetrical or evenly marked, or well, set up, I should be able to do it on both edges. Which it does look perfect. So, use these if you can. If you can't, just mark it out really precisely using a ruler, a ruler and um, a tri-square, which is one of those, of course. But you can mark it up. Okay. You can mark it up for each. That's even, that's even, and that's even. So a third, third, third. Okay. One third on each. One third on each. And the um, principle of, of the, this joint is we're going to actually take out, um, that's got to, we're going to take out the sides because that's got to go in there. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yes, Jay. So why have you like shaded in that there? You shade in the parts you're going to cut off, always. Is that so you don't cut out the wrong bit? Absolutely, yeah. All I've marked out that side. There. We'll cut out this. Start from the edge, work across. There. So that, that's the bit we're going to cut out, and that piece. And um, we'll use a tenon saw. Okay. Come back to you in a minute, Shed. Okay, just coming back. Obviously, that's what we're making. Four jointed frame. Some of the tools are using the marking gauge. Okay. Um, a chisel, bevel edged, if ideally bevel edged chisel. Yeah, bevel on it. Um, a ruler. Um, a large and small tri square, or just have a large one if you can. And you can even get a look a dovetail square. They're not that expensive. They're about six pounds each. Um, depending where you buy them. Um, and then your timber. Timber, for this sort of timber, uh, I don't know, it's roughly about two to three pounds per meter, perhaps two meters. Again, it depends on where you buy it. And you can plane it out using a plane. And I'll show you a plane. There's a plane. And I might even show you how to, to sharpen the blade later. Plane there. Now we've marked it up, that's gonna go into there. We've made sure we've got our size and uh, that's the facing inside. That's the facing inside, so it's gonna go like that. Can you see, keep all the markings right. Um, I'm going to cut that, and that, and that, and that on the inside of the line with a tenon saw. So I'll quickly start you off with that. You all right, Joe? Yeah, uh, don't we need a bench hook as well? Yeah, I've got a bench hook there, good point. 
turn that round there. You come round this side, Jay. Put your tenon saw, make sure the teeth are sharp on the tenon saw. If they're not sharp, here's one that's not so sharp. You can see, it will look a little bit like yes, that. Once the edge is gone, it's, it's they're no good, you can't sharpen these type. Anyway, a good saw, so as long as you look after them. You hit a nail on them, that's it, then fold it over. Right, so I'm going to start at a slight angle. I'll put my finger there. You won't cut your finger as long as your finger's obviously to one side. See that, Jake? I'm going to come across at an angle, yeah, and I'm going to gradually bring it down on the inside of the line. You should still be able to see that line. Nice sharp blade. Hold it firmly. You don't have to rush it, use the hold of the blade. One. Again. Inside of the line. Can you see that, Shed Hackers? It's on the inside, I can still see that line. You might ask what would happen if you went over the line. Well, it would mean that your joint would be uh, not very precise. It would be all wobbly, wouldn't it? Okay. There's one. We'll do the same here. Let's go vertical. And again here. We're going to cut out across there. What I suggest you do, do one in the middle. Move back a bit, Jay. Now I'm doing this really so it's easy for you to then chisel it. Okay. So you can then take it, put it into your vise. I've got a nice new vise jaws on, can you see? Make sure your vise is nice. Or you could just clamp it down with a G-clamp, I suppose. And a G-clamp looks like this. You could just do this, if you haven't got a vise at home. You could clamp the wood down onto the bench here. You could clamp it down, couldn't you, if you wanted to. Um, and that's what a G clamp looks like. That's a G clamp there, yeah, yeah. And then using a mallet, could you pass me that mallet, Jay? Yeah. There's a mallet. Don't use a, a hammer on a chisel, you'll damage the end. Okay. Hot day today, Jay, isn't it? Yeah. My shorts on. Keeping it level. And the bevel is facing up. You see the bevel is facing up. Dead on the line. Now I've gone from one side. Now turn my timber round. <laughs> <laughs> and then So how are you doing that? I'm just doing that with the weight of my hand, that's it. That's it, that's all it needs. Can use a chisel. So here. So uh, could you add glue to this joint? Oh, all the joints could point, all the joints will be glued. The joint gives you the construction strength and the glue um, adds to that to stop it moving once it's joined. But the joint itself should be strong enough pretty well to support what you're doing. Don't go mad with hammering. Keep your workplace tidy, I would. And again, very carefully, come across at an angle. 
and go lower than the line. You just go around the edge, right? That's it. So we could make a window frame in this method. Or all sorts of frames. Part of a staircase. Often use these joints. So if you're going into any sort of construction work, this is okay. So it's nothing along those lines. Okay. And then we'll make uh, the part that goes. Is that the piece we marked out? Was that the piece? Yeah. It is, uh, it? I think so. Yeah. So that'll now fit into there. So I've got to cut out that. And uh, how are we going to do that? Uh, a bit more tricky. Yes, I'll um, put that in a vise. I'll cut down there with a tenon saw. Two angles that way, and then do that way, and then that way, and then the same on that one. Yes, Jake. Oh, um, do, do they have to use a tenon saw, or can they use other saws? Yeah, I think tenon saw is the most appropriate saw. You can get dovetail saws, which are much finer blade, but these saws, I think this will be most appropriate for this one. Okay. Do a triangle action, like a triangle there, and then there. Get the line right first, and then the next, the other cuts sort of follow that line. Okay, come back to you when we've done Here's that. Jake, you're asking about types of saws. Um, that's your um, tenon saw. That's a dovetail saw, which is a smaller version of the tenon saw, a finer blade. This particular type, you can actually sharpen as you've got very fine needle files. And then you have the um, rip saw. Okay, these are the much larger ones. And the teeth per inch vary. The finer the teeth, the finer the work you can do. But you can get, I think this is something like seven or eight TPI, teeth per inch. Um, but you can get 10 and you can go down to about 5 teeth per inch, which means it's, it's a very coarse grade gray, um, cut and um, it, it can be used on rougher work. But the finer the teeth, but you suppose you could use that, but it, <laughs> it might make your job a little bit tricky. Okay, oh. but good question. Um, so we carry on with tennis saw. This is another saw, coping saw, uh, and this is often used for cuts um, in, in deep in a depth where you can't get in with that and you can use it for curved work as well so that's your when we made this we used it to, to cut that curve didn't we yeah this is a coping saw so going back to our four jointed frame we've marked it off that's going to go in there eventually we're keeping the face in mark the face mark all on the inside together and we're going to cut that out. Now you may ask, I could chisel it out, I could drill it out. Probably the best way, I think, um, even if you're working on site or somewhere, or is to use a coping saw. So you go down to the bottom, come up about two millimetres, start turning. It should cut on the, on the stroke coming towards your body, the back stroke. Keep it level, it's so important to keep it level. I'm going to go back to the other side, yeah, keep it level, I don't want it, that's the danger, you go over, or there, and make it point just slightly up, because the tendency of the blade is to actually cut it over the line, keeping it level, I'm really hoping that's, yeah, it's okay, okay, uh -huh. And there, you can turn it around, get it nice and neat. It must be level. You could, I suppose, very carefully just chisel it. But don't chisel right off the back, because you'll break the wood off the back there. Mm. So chisel just from the front and then turn it around. Um, could you use like a file to get the inside? Yeah, you can do, and some people do use files. The files are okay, but 
um, they're, they're not seen as really professional um, tools for woodwork, for metalwork files normally. But you can use files you want. I think it's very common that they ask that I use. Now in theory, let's see. In I, theory, this should work. go into here. First, oh blimey, oh, wow. well, there you go. Not bad for first timer there. Okay, so if you get even near that guys in your first time, that would be really good. So let's go, uh, I'll bring the other joints up. So there's our, oh that's our, our um, dovetail. dovetail one, which I'll show you in a minute. That's our mortise and tenon. There's our bridle. Okay, T halving, the T halving joint. Well, that joint, if I just go around here, Jay. The T halving joint is this one here, where you cut out half of one, half of the other, and it fits inside like that. So, have I got one here? Not one finished. So we'll mark out the tea harvey. Okay. That's the dovetail one there. To the tea harvey. So this is easier in some ways. Uh, all you need is your tri square. You've marked up, you've marked up the, the depth there. That's not greatly. I'm going to trim that. The, it's, it's so important you get your lines right straight away. But we've got to mark round here. I'll trim that later. Be careful how to do that for that again. Sharpening tools the better. Got that, Jay? Yeah. Get that there. Keep your tools nice and neat, guys, otherwise you end up and all goes wrong. And keep an eye on your tools, of course. <laughs> yeah. Had a few tools go missing in my life. I was at university, I had a whole toolbox go missing. Anyway. Now, this is where you can go wrong. We want to keep that. I want that piece, but I don't want this piece. Yeah? So you could, that's what some people do, they actually make a mark. So that's the bit we're going to cut off. That's marked of the cross. This is also, if that's going to come off, this has got to come off. So, can I get this right, guys? Mark your halving half. Could use a marking gauge and set it up for half. See that? Keep that there. It must be on its side. And then there. This is the bit we're going to cut off. That's the bit we want. Tick it. And we don't want this. I'm going to still mark up A and A because, of course, when I cut that off, we won't know what joint it is. Well, we should do, but. So I'm going to cut this off now, take out, I'm quite pleased with that joint, Jay. Yeah. This can go either straight into the um, device, I'd use the vice if you can at all times, but if you haven't got a vice, you can still put this on the side here. And these, you can make one of these, so you can always make it precisely. Put that there. Uh, tenon saw, Jake, if I if you focus on the tenon saw there, that's it. Okay, we're going to use this. And I'm going to go on the inside of the line. Before I do anything, I'm just going to double check. Yeah, look. Now those lines, I just definitely don't want to go over the lines. Can you see? Yes, I'm sure that I don't make a mistake. So we're taking out a piece on the inside again. If you come around this, no, no, perhaps that side's good. So you, your finger's just there. And then you come down. Nice and slowly, keep it right near the vice jaw here, and it has to be vertical, and then you can come down horizontally as you go, and I'm following that line there, can you see where my finger is, I'm going the other side, down to the middle, okay, so this is a halving joint. On the inside there. Yeah. 
So you still can see that line, that's so important. There. If your tools are sharp, you can see how quickly in a piece of pine it will cut. Okay, now that you can turn it on the side here. You could um, G clamp this if you wanted to again on the device. You could G clamp it and then you could chisel it. But I always like using the vise where I can. Put it in above the vise jaws. These are the vise jaws. And Ooh, they look nice and new. Yeah, I did it, I did it especially for this clip actually. Yeah, all new. Got a bit of extra time at the moment with things going on, haven't we? Yeah, we've certainly the country. The lockdown at the moment. Yes. Bank holiday, May 2020, no April 2020, Easter, oh, wow. country's on lockdown at the moment, with a problem with the virus, but we can cope I'm sure, I hope, as long as we stay in, and, uh... stay safe, now I haven't marked the line there, halfway, That's a bit silly. yeah, now we're going to cut that there, Yeah. Coming up, don't be tempted to dig in. Come up just slightly. And there are only small taps, can you see, Jake? Yeah. Oh, it is small taps. And then very carefully, you can use a chisel to control it if you want to. I'm going to use a chisel. Don't be tempted to chisel right off the edge, otherwise, you'll break that edge off. So come from the side. Okay. Right, if you go around that side, Jay, I'll go around this side. Do you like this sort of thing, Jay? Yeah. Could be a carpenter one day, couldn't you? Maybe. Lots of famous people were carpenters. Can you name a famous carpenter? Um, well, my granddad was. Oh, yes, he was. Yeah, of course. Jesus was a carpenter, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right, that's that done. Okay, and where's our joint? Oh, we haven't got um, it off yet. Okay, no. so that's that. Okay, shed hackers, we're going to cut this joint off now. I'm going to double check what I'm doing. That's on the inside, that's on the inside. Yes, yep. Yeah. Inside, inside, that's the face edge. I know I'm cutting the right side off. And you can already see that's going to fit together quite well. Yeah, it should do. I think it's going to be a bit less loose than I thought, but anyway, never mind. So I'm going to cut down there and there. Come back to you in a minute, guys. <laughs> 